Hello everybody, this is Pietro Mascadri. We are almost ready to start. Can you hear me? Please use the chat on the right. Okay, thank you so much for your feedbacks. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Brian. Okay, here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar about uh, HMI and micro PLC. I'll go a little bit fast because we have a lot of topics to go through today. So let me introduce the speakers. My name is Pietro Mascadri. I'm training manager for Lovato Electric. Uh, Andrea Lorenzi is a product specialist and will be your trainer. And uh, Giuseppe Rotastabelli will give you a short uh, speech as export area manager. Main topics will be HMI and main features our range, the communication protocols, and uh, uh, programs, softwares. And uh, Andrea will show you uh, also different tools uh, as uh, ready-to-use uh, scenarios. Uh, the final part will be focused on the micro PLCs. So this is uh, basically the agenda. Uh, for beginners uh, in the platform, uh, don't worry, it's very easy to use. Uh, you can see slides in front of you. And uh, on the right side, you have uh, a chat to share with us uh, audio, video issues. Uh, and uh, a Q&A session will be available at the end of the event uh, to put your technical questions. How to get slides? It's very, very easy to do. Please uh, refer to Lovato Electric subsidiary or uh, importer in your country, your export area manager at Lovato Electric Spa, or write directly uh, to this email academy, um, uh, lovatoelectric.com. Um, that's all from my side. So now I leave the microphone to Giuseppe, and thank you, and enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Pietro. You're always sharp on time, as usual. And, uh, well, good morning, gentlemen. This is Giuseppe speaking from uh, Lovato Electric, Italy. First of all, I would like, I hope that you and your family are in good health. Today, we're going to talk about HMI and uh, micro PLC together with uh, Andre Lorenzi. He will explain you our product range, and he will show you some practical uses of these products. I'm sure that you are familiar with industrial automation and therefore know already these uh, two, two type of uh, products. Programmable logic controller is a sort of computer, is a data processor and it was born many years ago during the 60s. And in the beginning, PLCs were designed just for the big uh, automobile industries and other big <laughs> industries. But today, as you know, we have available micro PLCs which are more compact, not so expensive, and they are used uh, in smaller factories and uh, smaller automation. Find micro PLCs everywhere, onto machinery, assembly line, water pumps, compressor, conveyor belt, food machinery, ventilation, refrigeration. It's uh, difficult to remember all the different applications. And what about HMI? HMI stands for Human Machine Interface. It's a kind of a touch screen, like the ones you can find go to your bank when you're in front of your automatic teller machine to get your cash. It's like a, a computer screen, and you can use it to control and monitor machines, motor pumps, industrial processes, and, and so on. With an HMI, you can better interact, you can better work with your machine because you can understand faster the status and the condition of the machine or of your industrial process. And HMIs can also connect to, to a PLC logic and, and display it on a screen for analysis and troubleshooting uh, purposes. But for maintenance personnel, this can save valuable time compared to connecting a computer or a laptop uh, every time to check what's going on. 
So Lovato Electric uh, HMIs can be used also connected with many Lovato Electric products like EV energy meters, our soft starters, the variable speed drives, the automatic transfer switches controller, uh, and also RGK controller, but just a controller and so on. So you can propose to, to the final client a sort of a, a, an ecosystem. And uh, so today, uh, you're going to, to have a look at all these uh, products together with, uh, with Andrea. I thank you for the time uh, you give uh, to, to this presentation. And uh, now I leave the floor to Andrea, who will tell you all the practical and all the characteristics of these uh, products. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Giuseppe. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Andrea Lorenzi speaking. We start uh, this webinar from uh, the HMI, the world of HMI. First of all, just a few words to understand what is an HMI. HMI, user machine interface, is a user interface or a dashboard to connect a user to a machine or to a system or devices. HMI are uh, normally used for the control of uh, an industrial process to collect and display data to track process data, for example, to see the production results, to see operating time, statistics, and so on, with the use of data logs and graphical trends. And it is used also to monitor the input and output of the machine, or to perform commands to the machine using the touchscreen of the HMI. It is a very common product, especially in the world of the industry 4.0, and it allows the interaction between the machine <clears throat> and the operators in order to optimize the industrial process. There are a, a very big amount of application sectors for the HMI. Here I have uh, resumed uh, the main sectors, energy management, manufacturing industry, packaging, power industry, food and beverage, HVAC, uh, and many others. HMI are used uh, from a uh, different person. They are typically used from user operator in order to command directly the machine from the touch screen of the HMI, so to send commands to the machine and to monitor the status. They are used for, uh, from system integrators, for example, to allow the interaction, the communication between products and devices which are installed in the factory. And they are used from the facility manager in order to have uh, the monitoring of uh, a complete monitoring of the industrial process, all the data, and uh, to perform diagnostic. Every rule has a different purpose and different level of permissions, which allows the security. For example, the facility manager is able to monitor all the, all the data, but cannot perform actions directly on the machine, which is uh, a purpose, for example, for the user operator. Which are the typical devices connected to the HMI? The most common are the PLC, PLC are uh, uh, programmable, programmable logic controllers, or micro PLC, which are used for the command of uh, the machines, to, so to perform automations. These micro PLC or PLC are typically connected also to sensors in order to read measure from the plant. HMI can be interfaced also with uh, digital metering devices, with the controllers, for example, power factor controllers, automatic transfer switch controllers, or motor starters like soft starters and lives, or external gateways, softwares, and SCADA. So if you need to interface the HMI uh, to a monitoring system like software or like SCADA, you can connect the HMI to the local RNA network, and you can create an interaction between all these devices. HMI can be used to perform simple or advanced function. Simple function, it means that uh, you can use uh, the, the display of the HMI as a simple display just to read uh, the electrical measure of the plant, to read the status of the machine, to read alarms, statistics, uh, to see live trends, uh, to perform data logging, to see charts, or you can perform advanced function. In this case, it means that you perform uh, a command of the machine, so you can control the machine process, you can switch the machine or off, you can increase the production speed, you can manage the alarms, you can generate automatic reports, so you can perform also advanced function. This is an example of application, in this case uh, is the monitoring of a, a factory, where there are many types of devices installed, we have controllers, we have a sensor, uh, we have counters, 
in the advantage is that from the display of the HMI, the facility manager can control the machine status and the process data, so you can read measures like energy meters, power consumption, temperature, water level, and so on, from a centralized position, without need to go to the different places in order to read the different sensor and the status of the machine. HMI can be used also to control multiple machines from the same panel, so you can connect all the machines to the HMI, the communication port, and from the display, we are able not just to monitor, but also to command the machine. We will see some examples of functions available on the HMI. For example, using buttons, you can operate and send commands. You can uh, uh, see charts. You can perform data logging. You can uh, see the data, pro data process, and so on. And this is another example. In this case, is a water treatment system where there are pumps, there are sensors, for example, pressure sensor, there are volts, there are uh, uh, float switches to control the level of water. From the HMI, you can control the status of all these devices. So you can monitor the value of the pressure, uh, you can control and uh, monitor the status of the pumps, so the status of the controller of the pump, like soft starters drives. You can monitor the level of the water in the tanks, you can command uh, the volts or just read the status, and so on, totally from a central position. The advantages of uh, the use of an HMI is that uh, the HMI has a graphic interface where you can insert simple and advanced objects that are called widgets, customizable in color, size, and placement. So you can create graphical pages in order to have a, a simple and clear view of the main important information. And uh, there is the possibility to make an interaction with this display. You can highlight, for example, the attention to critical data or conditions. This allows to improve uh, the system efficiency. So to make a monitor of the system, you can perform analysis and perform troubleshooting. The advantages of the HMI is that uh, you can read important information in real time from a central point without need uh, to move, for example, between different machines, without, between the different floors and departments. You have an, an immediate and intuitive representation of the data, thanks to the graphic of the HMI, so you can create pages, charts, Instagrams, dashboards, and so on. You can have an automatic data collection, so the HMI directly communicates with the devices connected, take the data, and it is able to process this information data. data. Moreover, you reduce the time and the cost of the maintenance, because you eliminate, for example, the risk of human errors. In the past, the operator uh, needed to go in front of the machine and write the process data on a paper. In this case, it's not necessary because the HMI is able to connect automatically to the machine or to the devices installed in the factory and collect automatically the data. The use of HMI allows the complete integration with the company monitoring system. The data which are collected by the HMI can also be sent to external software or to external gateway or SCADA to be monitored or processed. Lovato Electric has, has a, a range of uh, HMI. We have uh, three different versions according to the dimension of the display. We have a version 4, 7, or 10 inches with a graphic display, uh, 64,000 colors with backlight. It is a display with a plastic housing uh, IP66 and type uh, 4X. And uh, it provides a free communication port, one Ethernet port, one serial port, and one USB. Here you can see the uh, a picture or a photo of the um, connectivity of the HMI. As you can see, there is a, a supply connector 24 volt DC. The serial port is a, a multi-port type RS-45 or RS-232 or RS-422. By the software, you can configure the type of serial port. The Ethernet port is used also to communicate with device as well as the serial port. And the USB port can be used, for example, to export data or uh, um, reports and other functions. Let's start to understand uh, which are the communication protocols supported by the HMI. Communication protocol is the language with which the HMI is able to communicate with devices. LRH series of uh, Lovato Electric HMI supports uh, the Modbus protocol in the configuration RTU or TCP. It supports uh, Symantec uh, S7 Ethernet uh, protocol, 
OPC UA client server protocol and MQTT that will be explained one by one in the next slide. The Modbus protocol is the, the most common protocol that uh, can find in the market. It is a uh, completely an open pro protocol. It means that uh, uh, is uh, royalty free. It can be used over the Ethernet or serial cable, and it is present in three variants. Modbus ASCII, it means that uh, are used uh, ASCII characters to encode messages, but it's not so common. Modbus RTU and Modbus DCP are very common in the market. Modbus RTU works on a serial interface, and Modbus TCP works on Ethernet interface using TCP IP packages. Modbus RTU works on serial uh, interfaces. These cases are RS-232, RS-485, and RS-42. With the Modbus protocol, you have one device called a uh, master, and one or many devices slices called slaves. The master is uh, the device which has the rule to send commands to the slaves, and the slaves are not able to perform any command. They just send their answer when receive the request by the master. The type of connection uh, are typically two types. RS-232 is a point-to-point -point connection. In this case, you have one master, for example, the HMI, and one slave, for example, a PLC. It is a, a, an old solution. It allows to have a point-to-point -point connection with distances up to 15 meters. RS-485 or RS-42, which are similar, allows to reach greater distances up to 1,200 meters. In this case, you have one master and many slaves. You can connect up to 32 slaves to the same HMI without any repeater, and you can reach up to 247 devices using repeaters. The connection is very simple. The devices using Modbus RTU has to be connected in series with the daisy chain. So the cable must enter and exit for all the devices in series. It's not permitted a start connection topology. So where there are multiple connections to the same point, in this case, it, has, it is not permitted configuration. Modbus RTU is a common because the devices uh, uh, are identified by a number, which is called slave ID. Every device, every slave must have a different slave ID, and all the devices must uh, use the, the same communication speed. All the battle electric devices that we have uh, with the communication port uh, integrate Modbus RTU, for example. This is an example of connection where the master is the HMI, and the slaves, which are the devices which sends information to the master, can be, for example, micro PLC, can be meters, can be controllers. From the side of the HMI, we have a DB9 connector, so it is a classic serial connector that can be configured as a RS-232, RS-485, or RS-42. And the cable is a standard RS-485 twisted pair cable, so very easy to find in the market. Modbus TCP is very similar to the Modbus RTU, but the main difference is that in this case, the devices are not connected on the serial port, but are connected through Ethernet cable. So it works in uh, TCP IP networks. Modbus TCP uses different terms. For example, instead of the use of the name master and slave, it calls uh, client and server. The client is the device which makes, uh, which requires the information to the devices, and the servers are the devices which send their answers to the client. As you can see, the main difference is on the structure on the network. In this case, thanks to the Ethernet communication and the use of TCP IP communication, you can connect many devices in a network where there are present, for example, switches. So, so every device has uh, its uh, IP address, and the HMI, which is the client, is able to collect the data from every device. This is an example. We have a switch, multi-port uh, Ethernet. The client, in this case, is the HMI, which is uh, the master which uh, requires the information, the data, and measure to the devices. The devices are the server, which sends the information to the HMI. In this case, uh, you will use the Ethernet RJ485 port on the HMI side, and the cable is a standard Ethernet cable RJ485. You can also have a mixed configuration, so you can have 
many devices connected on the serial port, like TRS-485, and other devices connected to the Ethernet port. They can work in contemporary. On the serial port will be used the Modbus RTU, on the Ethernet port will be used the Modbus TCP, but the concept is the same. You can connect uh, low active devices, but also third-party devices. The important is that uh, these devices use Modbus, Modbus RTU or Modbus TCP protocol. In addition to Modbus, uh, this series of uh, HMI supports also Semantic S7 Ethernet communication port, which is the protocol used by uh, the Siemens uh, PLC controllers. In this case, there is an Ethernet connection, and uh, this protocol allows to have uh, an immediate interaction with this kind of PLC. You can export, for example, the text, which are the measure that you need to read from the PLC, directly using the Siemens Tire portal. And then we have uh, two very advanced uh, uh, interfaces for the communication, OPC UA and MQTT. OPC UA is a protocol which is used to simplify the exchange of data between devices of different vendors, of different brands. Devices are PLC, HMIs, servers, clients, meters, so every kind of devices which are installed in the factory. The purpose of the OPC UA is to allow the interconnectivity and the circulation of the information, which is very important in a production plant where there are products and devices of different vendor, vendors, which measure, register, and analyze the process parameters. Why it is important the OPC UA in the manufacturing sector? Because in the factory there are many types of devices like machines, like PLC, sensor, servers, gateways, application, and all these devices produce a huge amount of input and output data that need to be exchanged, exchanged between each other in order to be elaborated, to be analyzed, and to produce results useful to improve the productivity of the system, used to uh, reduce the waste and increase the profits of uh, the company. Moreover, sometimes these machines and these devices may be installed in remote buildings, not necessarily in the same factory. And in every building, you can have also a system which runs with different um, operating systems like Windows, like Linux, uh, or different kind of operating systems. So every building has to transmit to servers all this uh, big amount of data. And as you can imagine, the rule of this server is very complicated because it must be able to interpret all this data which are coming from different type of devices, which uses different kind of protocols, different kind of operating systems, and so on. So before the UPC UA, uh, no standard existed for the communication between industrial control devices of different brands and computer applications, like SCADA and HMI. In the past, the HMI must be able to have uh, the drivers of the device that you need to need to read. For example, in this picture, you can see three PLC. If I, the HMI doesn't have the driver of the PLC type C, it means that it's not able to communicate with it, except uh, the creation of uh, the driver. So it is a very long and complex work. It is a limited solution because every time you need to connect a new device, you must be able to generate the new driver. And this scenario becomes more and more complex with the increasing of the number and types of control devices and the number of applications that need to read the data from these devices in real time. So it is a very complex job. The goal of the UPC UA is to ensure the interoperability between the different devices of the different brands and the multi-vendor systems like Discada and HMI with an open protocol which allows to standardize the communication. Here you can see an example of uh, the automation of a factory where there are four machines in this case of different, different brands. So before the OPC UA, these different machines are unable to communicate with each other, are unable to communicate with the uh, PLC, with HMI, with clouds, without performing a very long and complex work of creation of the different protocols, creation of the different drives. So it was necessary to, to search for a solution to allow the device's interconnectivity in order to read and interpret data with different formats. The use of the OPC UA allows the devices to exchange the data within the machines 
between the different machines and from the machines to the system, so to the PC, the servers, to the cloud. Moreover, the advantage of the OPC is that it is totally independent from the hardware used by the machine and the manufacturer, so independently from the protocol used, we are able to read this data. So which are the advantages of the use of the OPC UA? It is a, one of the most important protocols for the industry 4.0 because it is an open protocol, so you don't have to pay any royalties. It is platform independent, it means that uh, it is able to run in different operating systems, Windows, Linux, Mac, Android and so on. It allows to obtain the interoperability between devices of different vendors. It allows a very uh, safety and secure communication, thanks to the use of keys and certificates. It is compatible with the, the new devices and the already existing infrastructures. So you don't need to recreate uh, the, the network. You are able to operate on the already existing infrastructures. And it works uh, also um, on the TCP, on TCP IP network. This is the architecture. There is an architecture called the client-server architecture, where the client initiates the communication and sends command to the server. The server, when it receives a command from the client, it reads the, the data from the devices. In this example, you can see a PC, which is a, the OPC UA server, directly connected to the different PLC. And on the right, you can see some HMI, which are the OPC UA client which is the advantage of this structure. It is that the devices just receive the request from only one source, which is the OPC UA server. The OPC UA server is able to talk with the devices with, the, with their different protocols. But if you look to the side of the OPC UA client, in this case the HMI, the advantage is that they need just one interface, the OPC UA interface. And from this HMI, they are able to read all the data from the PLC, even if the HMI are not directly connected to the PLC and even if they don't support the protocol used by the PLC. So, so OPC UA is completely independent from the hardware of the PLC in this case and the protocol used. If you want, you can also work uh, um, uh, with a, a, an advanced network. So it is uh, totally routable, the OPC UA. So you can, you can program a router, so you can perform uh, uh, the different modern network topologies. So it can be used from the small local area network uh, systems up to the sites across the internet. Let's see some, see some example of the use of OPC UA with the HMI. HMI can be configured as an OPC UA server or client. If it is a server, it means that the, OPC, the HMI is directly connected to the devices like uh, PLC, meters, uh, and so on. In this case, the HMI reads the data from the different devices using their protocols. So the HMI, in this case, must be configured to support these protocols and tags. And the data collected from the devices by the HMI are then published to different clients. So from the PC that you find on the right, you can read all the tags, so all the full information provided by the devices connected to the HMI, even if these two PC are, don't support the protocols of these devices. The second solution is to use an HMI as a new PC UA client. UA client. In this case, the PC UA client is just a, like a, a normal protocol. The advantage is that the HMI is able to read all the information of all the devices connected to the OPC UA server, even if not directly connected to these devices and independently by the communication protocol. So for example, if on my HMI, I need to read uh, um, a device which communicates with a protocol like Profibus, like Ethercat, which is not supported by the HMI, using the OPC UA interface, I'm able to read from the HMI the data of these devices, even if I'm not directly connected to the devices and even if the HMI doesn't support this type of protocols. So it is a very advanced solution. The second type of uh, advanced interface is the MQTT. It is a protocol uh, very common. It is a simple and light 
way, um, messaging protocol. It has been created uh, for, uh, for devices with low performance or for networks with uh, a low bandwidth or high latency. The targets of the MQTT is to reduce the network bandwidth and to reduce the device resource requirement and opti optimize the energy consumption, especially for applications with battery supply. It is a protocol which is used in the world of machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication, where you need uh, to continue to a lot of data, or in the world of Internet of Things, or for mobile application, because mobile application, for example, smartphones, uh, have a battery power. So in this case, you need to reduce uh, the use of the battery. So you need to have a very light protocol. Uh, it is uh, MQTT is, for example, the protocol used by the Facebook Messenger or the WhatsApp application. It is a protocol to increase the speed, the speed of messages and to use the less bandwidth. The structure of uh, MQTT is completely different to the other protocols. In this case, uh, there is a structure called the Publish Subscribe Architecture, which is quite simple to understand. There are some senders which send information and some receivers which uh, receive information. Senders and receivers communicate with the broker, which is the responsible for the distribution of the messages to the receivers. Look, for example, to the picture uh, you can find in this slide. On the left, there are the senders of the message. They are called publishers. The publishers just send their information to an MQTT broker, which can be a software. For example, I have a sensor of temperature, I have an energy meter for the measure of energy. These two publishers just publish their data to the MQTT broker. The sender of the message, so it is the publisher, is not aware about the identity of the receiver. It just publishes its message to the broker. Then the receivers, which are called the subscribers, talks with the broker, and they subscribe to receiving messages. In this case, the subscribers can specify which are the message, messages which are interested in. So, for example, look at to on the right where you can find a laptop or an HMI or a smartphone. The first subscriber is interested to the topic of energy. So, it will subscribe to the topic energy to the MQTT broker and will receive the the data of the energy. The other example, the smartphone, subscribe to the MQTT broker uh, the topic of temperature and it will receive the information about temperature. If I have a third device, for example, uh, it may subscribe to both energy and temperature topics and it will receive this information. So the advantages of this solution is that uh, every device communicate just with the broker, which is responsible to forward the, me the messages. So the publisher doesn't know which are the subscribers and vice versa. So when there is a new data, it is the MQTT broker that will send this specific data to all the subscribers subscribed to this specific topic. This is an, an example. In this case, I have uh, many HMI or, or PC. Every device is, uh, for example, the HMI is connected to a PLC and one meter, the other HMI is connected to a power analyzer and the drive. The advantages of this solution is that the interface is unique. It is just the MQTT broker. There are many types of MQTT broker uh, which can be found in the uh, uh, internet, for example, Microsoft, Microsoft Azure, uh, Amazon, uh, IBM, Bluemix, uh, uh, Murano, Mosquito. There are different brokers. Or you can create by yourself your MQTT broker. The advantages of this solution is that all the publisher publishes its, their data to the MQTT broker and the other devices can subscribe to the topics to which are interested in and they will receive this information. So from the display of the HMI, in this case, you can read information from other devices which are not connected to the HMI, simple by interfacing with the MQTT broker. So the advantages of the MQTT is that it is a light protocol because the messages are very short, uh, very fast, and it is very efficient because you don't have to continue to ask to a server if there are new data available. It is the broker there 
when a new data is available, it will send this data to all the subscribers. It, is the, it allows to use devices with low capacities and uh, it allows to be used in a high latency network or when the bandwidth is limited or expensive. For example, in a machine-to-machine -machine communication where you continue to require data, uh, you can spend a lot of uh, money. In this case, uh, using this, in this protocol, you receive, you spend only when you need to receive the data, so when a new data is available. It is independent from the type and format of the data exchanged. So even if uh, my HMI um, doesn't support, for example, the connection of a temperature sensor, the HMI using MQTT is able to receive the data of a temperature thanks uh, to the interfacing with the MQTT broker. And the other advantage is the scalability. So uh, considering that uh, the devices are not aware about uh, where the different devices are uh, installed, you can uh, improve uh, this system, you can uh, add new devices without need to modify anything in the, in the network. So these are the main protocols which are supported by the HMI. Now let's see a uh, 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 focus on the software, programming software of the HMI. The software it is called LRH SW and integrates two applications. LRHSW is the real programming software for the HMI. And another software, which is called the LRHSW Client, it is a light application used uh, to remotely view and manage the project, which is running of an HMI. I start from the client, so uh, the light application. In this case, you can install this LRHSW Client on a monitor PC. And if the PC is connected to the same network of the HMI, you can immediately open uh, the project of the HMI. You can read the project of the HMI from your computer. So the client allows to monitor from remote the display of the HMI. And moreover, you can operate on the graphical widgets, for example, push buttons, sliders, and so on as if you were sitting in front of the HMI installed on the machine. So without need to go to the machine, you are able to operate from your personal computer directly to the HMI. So it is for a remote communication. You have just to type the IP address of the HMI. LRHSW is the real programming software for the HMI, which provides a, a very big amount of functions. In this webinar, we will see the, uh, the most common functionalities. First of all, this is the graphic interface. It is a very user-friendly interface. In the center, you have a blank page, which is the working area, so the page that will appear on the display of the HMI, where you download the project. On the left, you have the project view, which, where you can find the elements which compose the structure of the project. For example, uh, here you can create the pages, you can select the protocols, you can create the text, you can configure alarms, and so on. And on the right, you have the widget gallery. Widgets are, are the objects that can be used inside the projects, the graphical objects. And from the widget gallery, there are many types of uh, graphic objects, like buttons, likes, uh, switches, bars, uh, uh, images that can be used inside the project. Which are the main functions of the software? We have the widgets, so pre-configured graphical objects that you can place inside the page, and you can associate these uh, widgets to a text. Widgets are images, static or dynamic, are buttons, labels, numbers, meters, bar graphs, uh, videos, likes, uh, trends, uh, so you can use these widgets, or if you prefer, you can also create by yourself your custom widgets, and you can import these widgets from these widgets inside the project. HMI supports also the vector graphics. Vector graphics means that an image, as you know, is defined by points which are connected by lines and curves. If the HMI supports the vector graphics, means that you can enlarge or or uh, uh, reduce the dimension of the image without uh, losing any uh, quality resolution. So you can rescale the image without quality loss. 
on the HMI, you can perform events and actions. Events are used, for example, to trigger actions when you press a button, where you change a page on the HMI, where you connect, for example, a mouse and you operate, you, you press the button on the mouse connected to the HMI, where there is a data update or when there is an alarm. So you can create some, some actions and associate these actions to specific events. For example, when I press a button, I want to change a page on the HMI, I want to modify the value of a tag, I want to uh, run a JavaScript, I want to send an email. So every kind of actions can be independently programmed on the HMI. So every element that you insert in the page of the HMI can be associated to one or more actions. HMI can also manage alarms. So the alarms management allows to provide alerts through pop-up messages, typically uh, to display warning messages, which indicates uh, an abnormal condition or a malfunction. Every alarm is, uh, can be configured independently, so you can select the source of the alarm, the trigger, and you can decide which actions has to be performed in case of alarm. In this example, I am controlling the value of a temperature, and I want to show a pop-up window when the temperature is too high. You can also decide for each alarm, for example, to show the pop-up window, but to, to send also an email with a message uh, to um, uh, perform actions on text. So every alarm is totally customizable. We have also some uh, uh, graphical widgets dedicated for the alarms where you can check uh, the active alarms and the history of the alarms. You can use the HMI to perform uh, data logs. So to perform data logging, that logging means that you can sample and record the values of specific tags. For example, I want to monitor the value of energy collected by an energy meter. In this case, you can specify the time, the, the sampling time. And in this case, the data are logged and stored inside the memory of the HMI. The trigger can be done with a timer or with a dedicated tag, and the data logged can be then exported to a CSV file or can be displayed on the display on the HMI with a specific widget. You can also decide to save uh, the exported CSV file of the data log on the USB device if you connect uh, a USB pen to the USB port of the HMI, or this uh, uh, file can be sent, for example, uh, to the network for example, with an FTP server. With the HMI, you can create also trends, which are used to plot the data collected with the data logs on the chart. We have different type of trends, real-time trends, history trends, scatter diagram, consumption meters, histograms. We can also uh, manage uh, recipes. Recipes are collection of tags, values, organized in sets. For example, suppose that you want to control uh, the variables like temperature and humidity of, the, of a room in the three periods of the day, morning, afternoon, and evening. In this case, you can create three sets, morning, afternoon, and evening, where the text, temperature, and humidity can have different values according to the period of time. So, for example, during the morning, I, have, I want uh, a temperature of 18 uh, degrees, during the afternoon 20 degrees, during the evening 23 degrees. So by selecting and activating the recipes, you can change the value of uh, text. You can also use the HMI to generate reports. Reports are a collection of information which are printed on a PDF where there is an event. For example, you can program that uh, every day at a specific time, it is generated a report. The report can be configured completely in the layout and in the contents, trigger condition, and printed file location. This is an example. I have a project on an HMI for the management of a coffee machine. On the HMI, I read the temperature of the water and the level of the water, the coffee, and sugar. I want to generate it every day at a specific time, a report like the one shown in this example, where on this report I can read the actual value of the temperature and the status of the sensor of water, coffee, and sugar. So you can generate reports like this. 
HMI can be used also to manage many languages. We have a very big amount of languages available. And you can uh, translate each terms used inside the project. And you can switch from a language to another one just uh, using uh, push buttons. In this example, I have, select, I have configured three languages, English, Italian, and French. Every language can have a different font. And I have associated the function and the events to change the, the language to three different push buttons. You can also create a scheduler. Scheduler uh, allows to uh, execute specific actions at set intervals or on a time basis. For example, you can send an email every day, every day at a specific time. You can modify a tag value um, at the specific uh, conditions. Or, for example, every um, uh, days of a uh, week, you can show a specific dialog page and so on. So you can program actions according to the time. You can also use the HMI with the function data transfer which is used to transfer variables from one device to another. So in this case, this might works like a gateway between the two devices, even if the two devices don't use the same communication protocol. In this example, I have uh, two tags on the first micro PLC and other two tags on the other micro PLC. Using the data transfer data, the HMI can be used to transfer data from one PLC to the other one. You can also create uh, JavaScript. So uh, suppose that you want to create an advanced function which is not integrated in the HMI. Using the Java language, you can create by yourself a script using the JavaScript. So in case of uh, uh, an event, you can perform and run your JavaScript. We have also um, made a, big, a big amount of uh, widgets there are widgets dedicated for uh, the web, media widgets. For example, you can insert a web browser uh, to navigate in internet. You can uh, insert an RSS feed widget in order to see online news on the um, display of the HMI. You can use a media player to play video. You can uh, use the IP camera widget to see the images captured by an IP camera or a video stream. HMI are also very safety because uh, there is a a uh, very important uh, user management on this series of HMI. It, it means that you can divide uh, the different users in groups, and for each group, you can define different authorization and permissions. Authorization and permission on widgets, so you can decide uh, which widgets can be used, for example, for the different uh, users, and also actions permissions. You can decide if some actions are allowed or not allowed. And finally, there is a very useful function, which is the web access. When you create a project with this series of the HMI, the same project can be uh, displayed from a, a, a web browser, so or from a computer, or on mobile devices. So using your smartphone or using your tablet, you are able to read in real time the project which is running on the HMI without need to configure anything. So it's very fast and very intuitive feature. Other HSW projects are based on HTML5 technology, which is the uh, one of the last technologies, which means that you don't need any plugin or any external software to display the information. If your HMI is connected in the internet, you are able, or, or inside your network, you are able to monitor from your PC, your tablet, or your smartphone, the same project which is running on the HMI. So it is very, very common solution. Lovato is a, a big range of uh, devices. And we have created uh, scenarios for typical applications. So in order to simplify the work of uh, creation of the project and configuration, uh, we have created pre-configured scenarios for typical applications managed with Lovato Electric products. This scenario allows a simple and immediate interface with the, uh, between the LRH HMI and the Lovato devices. These scenarios allow to have an immediate interface with the device 
They are very simple to use, very simple to understand, and ready to use. So you have just to download this scenario to the HMI, connect the HMI to the Lovato device, and you are immediately ready to work. You have scenario, for example, for the control of micro PLC. It is a page where you can check the status of the status of the I.O. and the analog input using lights and the graphical bars. We have a new scenario for micro, micro PLC. Micro PLC are also commonly used for a typical application, which is the attendance control. So when you need to count, for example, the number of people which are present inside a factory or inside a shopping mall, with this scenario, you can just connect, for example, the photo cell of the, the turnstile to the micro PLC. The micro PLC counts the people present, and from the HMI, you can read from the display how many people are present, how many available suites are remaining, um, uh, which is the day, which is uh, uh, the temperature, so you can have the attendance control directly from the HMI. We have also a scenario for the monitoring of a photovoltaic plant controlled with a DME energy meter series. From this page, you can see how many kilowatt hours you have produced, so which is the producing and consuming energy, the main electrical variable of the plant, like voltage, frequency, and power. We have a scenario for the control of a pump using a drive, VLB free series. In this case, using this scenario, you can command the pump. You can select the direction, you can increase the speed, and monitor the electric parameters. We have the same scenario also for substarters, when you can read the, the status of the substarters and videos for the power factor correction. So uh, using this uh, DCRG8 uh, controller, automatic PFC controller, you can see uh, the actual uh, power factor in the plant, you can see the main electrical measure, you can change the operating mode of the controller, you can switch on and off uh, the single steps, so the single capacitor banks, if you are working in manual mode, directly from the HMI. We have a scenario for the control of uh, automatic transfer switch panels, so the, for the power management, where you have two lines and you, you use a, an ATL 610 controller connected to the HMI. From the display of the HMI, you can change the operating mode and the breakers, and you can monitor the status of the two lines. We also have a, a scenario for uh, the command and the monitoring of a mains generator application with RGK controller. So in this case, you can control the status uh, of uh, the mains, so your network, and you can control the status of the generator, and you can also command the start and stop of the generator or the switch of the load under the main, main line of the generator. So they are very common. You can use this scenario just to start with your project, and then you can modify the scenario as you prefer. But the advantage is that using this scenario, you immediately understand uh, how to create a project, how are configured the protocols, how you need to configure the text. So they are very simple and, con and uh, useful example. Just a few notes about the software. The configuration of the software is very simple. There is an area called, uh, so the steps to follow are four. Firstly, you have to select the protocol, so the language with which you um, you want to communicate with your devices. Then you need to configure the tax. Tax are the data that you need to read from the devices. For example, in a PLC, the tax are the inputs, the outputs, and the analog inputs, the timers, the counters. Then you insert a widget from the widget gallery. In this example, it is a light. And finally, you, you need to associate this uh, widget to one of the tags that you have created before. So the, the process is very simple. If you need more information, we have, uh, we have uh, some video tutorials on uh, the Water Electric YouTube channel, especially if it is the first time you use uh, uh, the HMI, this video helps you to understand which are the main steps for the configuration. And we also have some marketing tools like brochure, manuals, uh, you can find information on the website, uh, on the catalog, you can download a free scenario from the website, and that's all regarding the HMI. To, uh, the second part of the webinar is about micro PLC. Lovato Electric has an important range of micro PLC. Micro PLC is a 
PSC for the management of simple or medium complex automation. A micro PSC reads the status of some inputs, it performs a logic, and it is able to program to command some outputs. The inputs are typically uh, digital or analog signals, for example, the status of a push button, a selector, the status of a, the measure of a sensor, like a pressure, like a temperature, like the status of a valve. These inputs are read um, by the micro PLC. The micro PLC creates a logic, completely programmable, so you can create a logic combinations, timers, counters, you can create formulas, uh, comparators, and so on. And according to your program, you can activate the output. Outputs typically connected to loads. For example, you can switch on or off a light, uh, you can command a valve, you can command a buzzer, uh, you can switch a relays. Micro PLC have been introduced to resolve the limits of the wired logic. In the wired logic, if you need to create a simple or complex application, you need to use many components. Uh, it requires a long time for the wiring. Uh, it requires a very big dimension of the panel. Moreover, if you have an error in the panel, it is difficult to identify the cause of the fault. With the use of a micro PLC, you have a, a huge amount of uh, advantages. First of all, it is, a full, it is a very fast to use because you have a fast electrical panel assembly because in this case, uh, you have less components and wirings compared to electrical electromechanical panel. For example, if you need to, um, to count uh, some, uh, um, uh, if you need counters or timers, With an electromechanical solution, you need uh, many timers and many counters that has to be connected, that has to be programmed, and so on. With the micro PLC, counters and timers are integrated in the project, so you don't need to provide external devices. You have the advantage of the repeatability. In this case, uh, if you need to create the same project uh, in series, you have just to copy the same project to the different micro PLC. You don't need to recreate the panel. So it's very extremely fast and simple. You have the flexibility. Suppose that you need to modify uh, the project, you don't have uh, uh, to modify the wiring diagram of the electromechanical panel. You have just to modify the project of the micro PLC. And if you have an error, using uh, the debug of the micro PLC is very fast to identify the cause of the error. And you have the advantage of the dimension and the competitive price. Micro PSC are used in many sectors from the residential, for example, for the control of staircase and window lighting, uh, for the control of greenhouses and irrigation, or in industrial machines, uh, for example, for the machinery, uh, refrigeration systems, for the control of pumps, uh, ventilation, air conditioning, conveyors, ice cream machines, and so on. In our range, we have uh, uh, many base modules. Uh, main base modules are the micro PLC. We have different versions according to the auxiliary supply, 12 or 24 volts DC, 24 volts AC, or 240 volts AC. We have version with different number of uh, built-in I.O., 12, uh, 10, or 20 I.O. Version with the really output or transistor output, and a version with built-in RS-485 port. In addition, we have a range of expansion modules that can be mounted on the base module. These expansion modules can be digital I.O., analog I.O., uh, PT100 temperature inputs, or the rs 5 communication module. We also have a memory module for the backup of the program. In this slide, you can see the maximum configuration, so you can mount every expansion module uh, to the base module, and uh, with this configuration, you can arrive to manage up to uh, 56 uh, I.O. is free of software from our website. The software is called LRX SW. And the programming is very, very simple. We have two languages available, the ladder program or function block diagram. With micro PLC, you can create uh, uh, many functions. So you can sum or perform difference between variables. You can perform product on division. You can make comparison between variables. You can create uh, uh, pages to be shown on the display. Uh, you can manage PVM outputs or high-speed inputs. 
you can control uh, the PID for the uh, control of uh, uh, physical variable, you have multiplexer, ramps, uh, data registers, Boolean logic, so a very big amount of uh, functions available. We also have some kits. We have the kits uh, which includes uh, the micro PLC, the cable for the programming, and the software on the CD-ROM. We also have tra training kit. So if you need the, to uh, uh, create a project and make a simulation, uh, it is a very useful solution. Training kit is a uh, consist of uh, an RRD based module mounted on uh, a simulation board, which integrates a certain number of inputs and outputs. So is very um, very useful to understand how to work with the micro PLC. And then we have also kit with the micro PLC HMI with different models according to the dimension of the HMI display and the connection cable with the RS485. Also, it is, so it is more simple compared to an HMI, but it is useful for the simple application where you don't need to have a color display, just a um, more um, um, black and white display. This panel integrates a REST 232 and a REST 45 for a direct connect port, or if you need to connect more devices, you can use the built in REST 45 port to read the data from different devices. In this case, you can create a simple um, graphic elements in this page with uh, uh, and make values, static or dynamic text, uh, black and white uh, images. You can create uh, um, and send comments. You can create likes to read the status of the beads. And uh, you can write numeric values. Also for micro PR see, uh, we have uh, some documentation, brochure, technical manuals, website, catalog, and software. And to close the presentation, uh, I have reported here some example of application of micro PLC and HMI. This is, for example, a testing machine for the pilot like uh, assembly. We have an HMI on front where we can check the status of the machine and the micro PLC inside which manages the system. In, in this case, uh, is micro PLC used for the command of uh, an elevator. So the micro PLC read the status of the I.O. and uh, it uses its output to command the driver, which commands the elevator. In this case, a micro PLC used for uh, the command of an industrial vacuum cleaner or can be used to control uh, water pumps, in this case in a building automation, so inside hotels. This is, in this case, an uh, Elex P01 uh, operator panel micro PLC for an environmental machine. HMI used for our uh, laboratory testing stations. In this case, the micro PLC is used uh, for the submersible pump uh, for uh, rainwater tank uh, emptying. This is another testing machine with the HMI on front and micro PLC inside. This is uh, a machine uh, for uh, um, uh, the testing of the endurance of uh, the electromechanical contacts, for example, to test. Uh, the endurance of relays uh, or uh, the contacts of contactors. This is the machine for the oil production. Wellness equipment machine. As you can see, there is a very big uh, amount of uh, application. Machine for onion spilling, uh, machine for pellet shed, shredders, and so on. So that's all for the webinar. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we remain uh, available uh, um, for uh, next minutes for uh, questions. So you can use uh, the Q&A session. Yes, Andrea, um, just to break the ice, uh, I, uh, I read you the first question okay. uh, from Orlando. He wants to know if uh, our HMI can be uh, used with uh, different brands. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, because uh, um, the, you have just to control the protocol which is used and the interface that you need to use uh, for, the, um, for the communication. For example, if you have devices and components with different brands which use 
Maar het was protocol, RT, RTCP, of Symatic uh, 7 protocol, of PCUA, of MQTT, die HMI is able to be um, connected to these devices. So it is able to read the data from these devices, even if uh, are not uh, strictly Lovato brand. Second question is about OPC UA from Blake. OPC UA, why have uh, any other protocols if it interprets all of them? Because in this case, uh, to work the OPC UA, there must be one server and one client. The server is uh, the uh, software which is directly connected to the devices and which knows their protocols. But from the client side, typically the HMI is the client, is not important to support the protocols used by devices because the HMI interacts only with the OPC UA server. So, independently from the protocols used by the devices, from the HMI, you can read the data of these devices, even if you are not directly connected to the devices and even if you don't know these protocols because the OPC UA uh, interface is a sort of translators. So you communicate with an OPC UA server, which can be typically a uh, software. And this software is the responsible to interface with the device. But from the HMI side, you have just to read uh, all the data in a standard format, which is the OPC UA. Another question about MQTT. Is MQTT like can open? Uh, not, not because... Uh, is different. With MQTT, is very fast compared to uh, the can open. MQTT allows to uh, receive the data for many devices without any connection. So you have just to interface with an MQTT broker, and you have just to subscribe to the co topics you are interested. For example, suppose that you have a company where there are energy meters, power factor controllers, uh, sensors, uh, PLC, drives from the HMI, suppose that you want to read only the energy and the temperature, you have just to communicate with the broker and subscribe to the topic of energy and temperature. So you don't have to be interfaced to the other devices. With CanOpen, CanOpen works on a serial interface. So in this case, you have to perform the connection to uh, the devices and it is, it is not a lightweight protocol called like the MQTT. MQTT will be more and more present in the uh, in the automation plan uh, um, um, networks which are available or we, where there is low bandwidth and uh, uh, it is independently by from the protocol used by the device. Another question is from Abdul. How many analog input and output uh, are available in the micro PLC? In the base module, there are, uh, uh, in the version with the 12 built-in I.O., you have uh, in the DC supply version, so the version with the 12 volts DC supply or 24 volts DC supply, you have two analog inputs, type 0, 10 volts. In the bigger base module, which have uh, 20 I.O., in this case, there are four analog inputs built in, type 0, 10 volts. If you need uh, additional analog inputs or uh, analog outputs, uh, for example, different types, so current analog inputs or uh, analog output, you need to add the expansion, the expansion module. So the built in analog inputs are just type 0, 10 volts, and there are two on the little base module with 12 IO and four analog inputs in the base module with 20 AU. We, there is a question about the shortest sample time for the data logging. Today is a one second, but with the new release of software that will be launched, uh, I think, next week, uh, which integrates, for example, also the MQTT. Um, for the data logging, uh, you can set, set a minimum time of 0 0.1 second. Another question is about uh, uh, recipes. 
where save the recipes dates and did they reset in zero when download the modified program? Uh, no, you can save uh, the actual value of the recipes. In this way, even if you uh, download a new program, you can maintain the value. Question about the language. What languages are accessible? It is on Ladder. Uh, if we talk about the micro PLC, we have Ladder and the function block diagram, FBD. A question from Daniel. If I understand, understand correctly, it is possible to record with an HMI. For example, if I take a DMG, can I record with an HMI and send ARM or information to server? Uh, yes, in this case, the DMG, which is the, mean, the power analyzer, is connected to the HMI. So the HMI is able to read, measure, and data from the DMG. And then you can create on the HMI, for example, alarms. And in case of active alarm, it is the HMI which sends an email to a server. So the answer is yes. Another question about uh, HMI is compatible with Rockwell brand in Ethernet bus. Uh, it depends on the protocol used by the Rockwell. If Rockwell used the uh, uh, Modbus TCP for the Ethernet bus, in this case, yes. Otherwise, it depends. If, there, if it is a protocol different, uh, it, it is not supported. If you use Modbus, yes. Another question from uh, Anthony is uh, about programming. Uh, yeah. The HMI is done uh, through the laptop or directly on the HMI itself? Through the laptop. Uh, so you need a software that you say that you, which is running on the uh, laptop. You can also program the HMI by offline. And uh, you can also program the HMI from remote. So if you have an HMI which is in another building, but in the same local network of the, the, of your PC, you can program from remote uh, HMI. But uh, HMI is not programming directly from the display. It's programming using the LRH SW software. A question from Mike. If you connect 32 DMZ 610 meters to LRH, what is the limit of measurement you can access per meter? Uh, in this case, uh, uh, if you mean uh, the limit of number of measure, uh, there is not a limit. Of course, more measure we read, uh, it depends on the performance of, of your network, because if you increase the number of the measure, you have lower performance. But uh, it depends how many widgets, for example, you have inside a page. Or uh, if you are talking about data logs, in this case, there is not a limit. There is a, a total limit of the text that you can import in a data log, which is 10,000 text. But generally, there is not a, a limit about the number of measures you can access. If you have a, a performant network, a fast network, you can increase uh, as you prefer the, the number of the measures. Question about uh, from SM for pumps application constant and variable speed. Uh, I think you are referring to the scenario. Yes, in this case, uh, is a scenario for the control of a drive, variable speed drive. Then you can decide to work with constant speed or variable speed. But this scenario allows to communicate directly with the drive via the three series. Uh, question from George, can we connect the PLCs to HMI to get more outputs, such as 48 outputs? Indirectly, yes, but in this case, consider that the logic runs on the PLC. So the HMI is the interface between, uh, uh, in this case, two PLC, for example. So you can have two PLC, and if you need to manage more I.O., this PLC communicates 
with each other using the HMI as a gateway. So there is the function data transfer, which allows to pass some data from one PLC to the other one. And in this case, using one HMI and two PLC, you can manage more I.O. Another question, if device have Profibus and Canvas protocol, then we have to use OPC UA protocol. In this case, yes, because uh, we don't have on the HMI Profibus and Canvas protocol. So you can use OPC UA or you can use MQTT, but uh, you cannot read directly uh, Profibus and Canvas protocol be because they're not supported by our range of HMI. Regarding the memory size of the HMI data log, this is another question. Uh, there is uh, um, an indicator. I go to the page, uh, page uh, regarding the data log. An indicator which uh, indicates how many memory is available for the project, including the data log. So when you are configuring the data log and you select, for example, the uh, number of the tags to log uh, or the sampling time, there is this uh, indicator, uh, the one in, in green that you can see from this page, which is called the total in memory space. You can see here the memory space available according to the uh, characteristic of your data log. So if you increase the sampling time, you will have uh, more space available. If you read a lot of tags and uh, with a very short sampling time, you will reduce the memory space. So using this indicator, you can immediately understand uh, uh, which is the maximum space available for the data log. Uh, another question, it is possible to run the LRH project on PC uh, without the HMI? Yes, because there is the simulator and uh, you can uh, simulate the entire project directly from your PC, even in, in offline, uh, working by offline, and then you can download in a second moment the project inside the HMI. Pietro, do you have uh, other questions? No, I don't see other questions. So uh, I think uh, in, in, in the meanwhile, I give you uh, in the chat this uh, uh, little survey. So I will send you uh, again uh, um, with the, uh, let's say, follow-up uh, email after the webinar, but if you want uh, also to, to go there, um, when, when you finish the webinar, you can test your knowledge with this little um, quiz, let's say. Um, Sorry, Pietro, just a little uh, last uh, question about yes. the license of the HMI software. Mm -hmm. When we bought an HMI, can we install the software on several computers? or must we buy for each computer one license. In this case, the license is associated to, uh, to the computer. Uh, so uh, it is associated to the MAC address of the computer. It is not related to the HMI. So with one PC, you can program how many HMI you want without need many license. But uh, if you change the PC, in this case, it is necessary a license for each PC. Okay, Andrea, I think uh, that's all. Uh, for all the people who want to address a technical question uh, to us, please uh, refer to also our uh, technical support. Um, our email is uh, service at lovatoelectric.com. Thank you so much for uh, attending this webinar, webinar and uh, we hope to see you in the next one. Thank you, Andrea, for your presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Beppe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.